Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Hello and welcome to another episode. Today, I'm answering your questions from Instagram. So I did a post saying, ask me anything, and... You guys came with the questions. Good, good questions. Also, thank you for participating because sometimes I'm afraid to post those things and then no one will respond. (laughs) It's just crickets. Um, So these are great questions. We're going to talk about everything from renting backdrops to um, picking colors and working with clients, diversifying my business, staying organized, everything. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we will get into the questions. Are you facing some competition? Hi, I'm Jeff from Asset Lab, and we help balloon decor businesses stand out online and generate more leads, more phone calls, and more contact form submissions through great online marketing. We can help you with your website, social media, advertising, Google search, you name it. We've helped balloon decor businesses with it. Learn more about us at assetlab.us. All right, let's jump right in. First off, is it worth offering rentals or backdrops early on or source it out? So totally an opinion, but I think you should source it out. I think for a couple of reasons. When you're first starting off, first of all, you don't know how much you really like this business. There have been many people who come into the balloon scene, realize they hate it, and then they leave. And I know this because I've bought their inventory. (laughs) There's a lot of people who try to sell me their balloons when they decide they don't want to do this anymore. Um, So I would hold off on getting all the stuff right away. The second reason is because backdrops can take up a ton of space and then you're automatically in like a storage space crunch right away. Balloons take up enough space on their own. But when you're just starting off, you can stay pretty lean, especially on the space side. Just inflate everything on site and you know, keep your stuff organized. Once you start adding backdrops and stuff into the mix, I think it it gets big quick and then you need storage lockers and a van and you just need a lot more stuff right away. So I would source it out. And third, I probably wouldn't even source it out. Like I wouldn't be the one providing the backdrop. I would tell my client that they should rent from this preferred vendor because then that's a really great way to make those connections because hopefully then that vendor would recommend you for the balloons in another situation and not just try to do the balloons themselves. So I think any times you can you can support and utilize another small business, that's the way to go. Especially with backdrops and stuff, I just that stuff gets big and if I'm not the one lugging it around, even better. All right, next question. Info about invoicing. Do you include specifics or one set price? Oh, good question. So I do my invoicing through 17 hats. And I itemize. So like if someone is buying a column, it it says a column and how many they want. If they want an arch, it says arch and how many they want. So I think that's important because I like people to see what they're getting. Sometimes they need to trim their budget and, you know, it's up to them what what gets left off. Um, I think when it's like a lump sum, they're much more wanting to negotiate. Like, ooh, I really was hoping to keep it under $500. And if they can't see what the options are, they're hoping you're just going to like shave $30 off the price when it's just like, well, it can be under $500, but you're going to lose a full balloon column if that's the case. You know, I think I think it's important to see things itemized. The more the more practical way from the business side to look at this is like you want to know what you're selling. If at the end of the year you can see that you did a $5,000 job, a $2,000 job, a $400 job, and a $500 job, and you don't you don't know what they bought because you are just seeing the lump sum. That's hard. So in 17 hats, every time I sell a column, when I go and I pull a report, I can see how many columns I've sold all year. I can see how many garlands, how many arches, how many, you know, installation fees I charge. Keeping that data kind of clean is 
in a way, it, it, it helps you get a better snapshot of your business because you might go all year and not really know what your money is actually coming from if you are just doing big lump sum pricing. However, I am all for keeping things simple. So like my columns are 125 and I know that's on the cheap side, but that's for any column. So if you want a square pack, if you want an organic column, if you want a regular spiral column, if you want this fancy column within reason, I just have one price for columns. Like I am not individually pricing out every single kind and color of columns. The only way that I would change that would be if like someone wanted a full chrome gold column because it would be like triple the price. Um, Same thing with arches. I have a narrow, a standard, and an extra wide. Like I don't ever talk about linear feet because nobody knows what that means. Nobody knows what a 30 linear foot arch means. If anything, it's going to confuse them. They're going to think that they're getting a 30 foot wide arch. They're not um, because when you actually arch it up, it it's way less than that. So I just have small, medium, large. I have columns. I have garland. And that is all standard. You can either do it by the foot. Again, I think pricing by the foot is very confusing. So I price my garlands in six foot chunks. I call them nuggets. And that way people order one, two, three, four, or five nuggets. And that's what they get. And that way I'm able to look and see like, holy cow, 50% of my sales were organic garland this year. Like because I itemize it on my invoice on 17 hats. Um, That is really, that's a really easy way to do it. All right, let's move on. How much is helium costing you? Uh, A lot. I'm not getting it right now. My tanks were $500, like in the normal days, in the good old days. My tanks were $500. I don't know what it is about Wisconsin. It's crazy up here. Helium is so expensive and it always has been. So when I got cut off, I kind of was like, eh, Maybe this is for the best. Like I'm not profiting a ton from helium anyway. So I go through a small welding company. Um, I don't I don't go through like air gas. I've never had good luck with them. They treat me like <laughs> they treat me like crap because I order, you know, one cylinder of helium at a time versus like 500 like a welder might. So I am I, I didn't like my experience at air gas. I like working with this small welding company, but The pricing is consistent everywhere because I did call around and try to get better pricing, but um, I just kind of let it, let it come to an end and I just don't offer helium right now. And I've turned away a few jobs, but um, not really enough to make a big difference. Sometimes people want helium and I'm just like, I don't have it. How about this instead? And that's fine. So yeah, helium costs a fortune and I am not using it right now. Uh, Would you talk on strategies on diversifying your business? Ooh, very good question. I don't, I don't really diversify my business a ton. Um, I do decor and I guess like one way of diversifying would be like New Year's Eve. I do like balloon drops and pop drops and that's more in like the special effects realm, but not really. It's all balloons. So I don't really diversify my business much. I, I believe the niches are, the riches are in the niches. So I am just balloons, but I think You could diversify by doing like backdrop rentals. I know some people have had great luck buying into the Alpha Lit franchise and they just own that company in addition to their business doing balloons. Um, There's a lot of ways to diversify, but I think sometimes instead of diversifying, you're actually cannibalizing. You're actually just eating into your own business. So another option would be to like twist balloons. But for example, you think if you're going to be a balloon twister as a, as a second source of income. All of those events are going to be Saturday mornings, which that's when all of your decor events are. So unless you have completely outsourced the decor and you are going to be free to balloon twist, you're basically trying to get the same clients at the same time and you're going to just be eating into your own business. So I don't really try to diversify my business. I try to keep it super, super focused on balloons. I would say I diversify my life. Um, That's why I still work a full-time day job that has nothing to do with balloons. So the likelihood of me losing my entire balloon business and my day job at the same time is very rare. So I'm like, that wouldn't happen. It would have happened over COVID and it didn't. So um, I'm pretty secure in that sense. Um, I'm also married and my husband has a job. So that's a bit of security. Um, So I try to diversify outside of balloons, if that makes sense. Um, I also have like different investments that, you know, I'm not like invested all in one thing, kind of you know, spread, spread things out that way as well. Um, but in terms of my business, like I'm all balloons and if balloons 
I don't know, if they vote to make them illegal or something, environmentalists pass a bill that balloons are no longer sold, then like I'm out of business and I will close my doors and move on to something else. That's kind of just the way I see it. Um, I don't see that happening anytime soon, but I don't, I don't make an effort to really try to do a lot of different things. I'm kind of the opposite. I try to be really narrowly focused. So everyone comes to me for balloons and they go to other people for other things. And that is how my brain works and how my business works. Um, doo -doo -doo. Colors. Does the customer accrue, approve the colors or approve the quote first, then work on the color palette? Uh, oh, this is a good question. So basically they're asking, at what point do you lock in the colors? Because she's saying she will get through the entire design process, picking colors and it's annoying and whatever. And then they don't, they don't book the job. So you spent all of that time. So let's take my grab and go garlands, for example. That is all done up front through 17 hats scheduling. So customers pick their own colors off of a color chart that I've made and they have to put that in the notes section before they can book and then they have to pay before they book. So in that case, it's all done ahead of time. So there's no back and forth, nothing. Um, and then I'm less strict about it when I'm actually like working with a client, but like I will fully book the client and have them pay before we settle on colors. I don't really care. Like I need to know colors, I don't know, a couple weeks ahead. Um, but that's because I work off of a standardized color chart. So I am not making every color available to everybody all the time. I have a color chart that I made that I is I send as like a digital a link and they pick their colors. Or if they say like just shades of blue, I then will follow up and say, okay, how about dark blue, um, blue slate, and you know, chrome blue. And I get them to approve. Like I make sure that we are we are on the same page color wise. And typically, I guess I would say like I'm okay confirming that after they pay. So yeah, if you have people who are wanting you to design everything before they actually book, that is that is tricky. But something as simple as colors should not be the thing holding them back. So I would I would almost put it back on them and be like, okay, like here's your here's your deposit. You can pay here, and then colors have to be confirmed three weeks before your event. So put it back on them and have them pay you something, whether it's a deposit or the full thing, and then almost extend it as a courtesy. Like let them take their time picking the colors. But if you're having problem with colors, I would I would imagine you're probably not letting them choose off of a chart because it narrows the decision and it gets them it gets their choices really quickly. So I would, yeah, I wouldn't go the whole way and design a whole thing before getting a booking or a deposit or something. Um, but certainly colors should not be, should not be an issue. So use a standard color chart and have them finalize after they pay. Um, how do you pick a name for your business? Oh, interesting. So I, if, so my, my business name is really boring, but I think I love it. Uh, it's Wisconsin Balloon Decor. So I just picked a big area and what I do. Wisconsin balloon decor. It ranks great on Google. People find me. It's easy to say. Um, you don't have to do that. I would say avoid names that are hard to spell or hard to say. I personally would avoid using like substitute spelling. So um, if if you have like, you know, you're spelling balloons a different way, like, oh, it's balloon with one L one O. That's going to be really confusing to like tell people every single time. Um you could use that to your advantage, like balloons with a Z. That might be, a you know, people might remember that. But in general, I think if it's hard to spell, hard to say, um, if it's like a lot of numbers, like I know a lot of times restaurants do this, they'll be like 815 East Street is like the name of the restaurant, but it's also the address. And it's like, that's really hard for me to remember. So I would say make it easy. Um, and then realistically or, you know, pragmatically, you want to make sure that the website isn't taken. So if you have your heart set on, um, you know, like Airheads balloon decor, there's probably like 50 of those in the United States. I just made that up. Um, or there, there's multiples of like anything pop, anything like anything that other balloon companies could have. Just make sure no one else in your area has that name and make sure the domain's available and then make sure at least the Gmail is available. So I would almost start with Gmail and, and pick a name that you can have a very simple email address. Um, I actually didn't do that. Wisconsin balloon decor didn't fit. So I have to do Wisconsin balloons and I hate that. So figure out something that is easy to say, easy to spell. The Gmail is available and 
the website domain is available. That'll get you started. Um, and don't overthink it. Like no one even calls me by my business name. They're always like, you're the balloon lady. You're the balloon girl. You're Wisconsin balloons. You're Wisconsin balloon company. You're Lake Geneva balloon company. You're like, nobody even knows the name of my, <laughs> the name of my business. So, um, don't overthink it. Just make sure that it is easy. All right, this one, brand new to the world of balloons. Where should I even start as far as education or classes? Um, I recommend Balloon Boss Mastermind. So I will link to that in the show notes. Joette is a sponsor of the show. I am in the mastermind. The classes, the resources, the networking that takes place in that group, in my opinion, um, is like nothing else right there, right now. So I would definitely start off, I think it's $100 a month and um, you'll absolutely get your money's worth. So I will link to that. What balloons would you recommend for outdoor events? Um, I use primarily Qualitex. I find that they stand up great outdoors. Um, I have also had really good luck with Toftex. Um, and those are kind of the only brands I use for the most part so I I think other brands probably do great outside as well I just don't have firsthand experience Um, you're just not going to want to use anything inexpensive or cheap certainly nothing from the dollar store or Target or Party City if you can help it and even even manufacturers sell low lower grade balloons like there is a place for cheap balloons um, maybe in balloon drops or uh, you know something like that but You're not going to want to use like a see-through translucent thin balloon, like a BSA is a brand I can think of. Those probably won't do great outside. Um, They're just not thick, so the sun's just going to eat through them a little bit faster. Uh, What is next? Do you think the balloon craze will die off? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I do. I think I think it's going to die off in two ways. I think people aren't going to be as into the organic garland installations as they are now. I mean, like, it's like anything. Once you see it everywhere, it's not as appealing. You kind of want what you, what's new. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I think it's going to be like five years. Um, And I think the balloon craze is going to die off amongst balloon people too. There was like this new influx of people who started doing balloons over COVID. And I think a lot of people are going to like pack it in. And that, you know, doesn't mean you're giving up or you're quitting or whatever, but maybe you started and this business served its time and place in your life and then you're going to move on. So um, yeah, I think that kind of as the demand dies down that so will the balloon businesses Um, and people retire and people just move on to different things. So I I wouldn't say right now where I live, there's necessarily a balloon craze. I would, I would say that balloons are in demand. Um, And I think we're sitting in a really great spot because a lot of places where people used to go to get cheap balloons, like the grocery store and the dollar store, they can't get helium. So that puts us in a really good position to, you know, help those customers with other ways that aren't helium. So I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, but I do think that we will see just like a natural ebb and flow in the balloon world. Um, all right. Someone asking how my van is organized. Oh, it's not. I had great plans to like organize and do some shelving and some bungee cords. And I just never did. Honestly, the weekend I got my job, I started, or my, my van, I started using it and I never stopped. So like it's always full of something or it's being emptied so that I can fill it again. So I just literally have a big old empty van with nothing in the back. And I keep a ladder, like a step ladder in there all the time. I keep my mag pole in there all the time. And that's it. That's, there's nothing else in there except a bunch of empty coffee cups and garbage on the floor. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. When's the best time to start a CRM? I'm new to this and I need to watch my spending. Yeah, so CRMs are a lot of work and they can be a lot of money. I use 17 hats, which I think is the most affordable um, CRM. I, I would assume. And I have a 50% off code for your first year. I will leave that in the show notes if you're interested. I think the new year is the perfect time to start because you're no matter what you do, you're going to have a transition from the way you used to do things to the way you need to do things now with a CRM. But I think the new year is a great time to start because it's actually kind of slow. January is usually pretty slow for me. So it's a good time to kind of start you know, reevaluating your booking process and your business logistics. You don't want to do that in the summer when you're like crazy busy. You just won't have time. So I think the first of the year is just like a natural fresh start. And you can, first step is to just 
buy 17 hats for the year. It's a few hundred dollars. And then get the inquiry form embedded onto your website or even just linked in your Instagram bio. You can just link directly to your inst- or to your 17 hats uh, in- info form. You don't even need to have you don't even need to have a website to get started. So that's really awesome. And yeah, I just think the first of the year is a great time to kind of start fresh and kind of finish out those jobs that are using your old system. It might be pen and paper or just email and then get all of your new people from here on out onboarded into your CRM. Even if you just use it to take information and send invoices, uh, 17 hats will be worth it. Also, if you need a resource to help you out, let Nicole help. Um, I think, I think it's .com. We'll link to her as well. She does full 17 hats like setups and has a, has a whole course to show you how to do it specifically for your balloon business. Do you use a pricing calculator? No, I do not. I, uh, I don't. (laughs) Maybe I should, but no, I have. And I feel like it's a lot of work to figure out that I'm already charging double what I need to be. You know, like pricing calculators are good to figure out what you have to charge in order to make money. I am above that and then some. So I don't, I'm making a profit on every single thing I sell. Like I know that for sure. So I don't price out individually. And I'm pretty low price wise too. I know a lot of people spend a lot or charge a lot more than I do. I'm at 125 for a column and my arches are mm, like 350 for like an average arch. But then for like a 30 foot organic arch. I'm at like a thousand. So, um, I like nice round numbers. I am actually raising the price of my garlands. I'm going to go up to 130. but, um, yeah, so I don't use a pricing calculator. I, I know based on my raw materials and my labor that I'm definitely making a profit. Um, so you could, I just don't, I don't use one. Um, do you have a big goal or dream for your business? If so, what is it? Oh man, that's a really, Oh, that's a really good one. And I probably should have thought about that first. I think, uh, I don't, I, I think for the longest time, my big goal was paying off my house. Like that was my goal that I was so focused on and I accomplished it. <laughs> so that's amazing, but also leaves me a bit aimless in terms of like what I'm really going for. I think my eyes have recently been opened to the thought of bringing more people on to help. Having Kate come and inflate my balloons has been such a game changer that for the first time, I'm kind of allowing myself to consider what it would look like if maybe there were a few people who worked behind the scenes so that I wouldn't even have to go to an install. Like I've never, ever, ever had a desire to have a staff ever. And I still don't really, but I'm just allowing myself kind of that thought of like, what would that look like? Would it be more stressful? Could it be less stressful? Could it be more profitable? Would it be less profitable? Like I'm just really kind of now starting to think about those things. I have no intention of building like a balloon empire. No, thank you. Um, but yeah, I think my big dream for my business would be like that it stays fun. I really want to travel. Like I, I'm, I'm hoping that I can start teaching, um, a little bit more. Like I love teaching. I love teaching people how to do balloons, especially like the basics or the tricks or the things that make it manageable. Like I just, that's why I love this podcast. Honestly, more of my hopes and dreams are around this podcast. Like I'm, I'm really hoping I can just kind of sustain this and keep it going. Cause it is so fulfilling and I love it. Um, But yeah, I would like to travel. I would like to see more of the world than I have. Um, And if it can be in the balloon balloon world, that would be awesome. So yeah, no, I'm I'm really kind of in this maintenance phase of my business right now, like all the hustle, all the work to get to this point. And now things are kind of humming along really easily. And as long as I can stay in that, you know, the fast lane, I would I would love to do that. That was a really nice question. Thank you. All right, let's take a quick break and hear from a sponsor. And then I will wrap up with the last two questions. If you haven't checked out Having a Party Wholesale yet, what are you waiting for? And guess what? The deal just got even sweeter. Our friends over at Having a Party have set up a special coupon code just for listeners of the podcast. Use code Bright Balloon for 5% off the next time you check out at Having a Party. So head over to havingaparty.com for your next balloon order. All right. Welcome back. We just have a couple questions left. Thank you again for participating. These are so fun. Um, next question, favorite inflator and balloon brand. Oh, okay. So I have two inflators. I have an Air Force four, which 
I use for organic because it is so fast. Whatever Amazon inflator you are using, throw it away. Get an Air Force 4. They're like a couple hundred bucks and the speed is crazy. The other reason I like it is because it has four nozzles. So, you know, you don't have four hands, so you hardly ever use all four. But on New Year's Eve, we just turn it on and it blows and blows and blows. And multiple people can all be blowing up balloons super fast at the same time without having to like wait for someone to hit the foot pedal. So it has multiple functions. So I love the Air Force 4. And then my workhorse is um, my premium model. So hang on, it's right here. I want to get the actual name. I have the, it's the Twin Air Sizer by Premium Conwin. So that is my sizer. Those are expensive. They're like $1,300. I think I, I saved for mine. So I waited until I got my first like $1,500 job that was going to pay for the whole inflator and I bought it. Um, But in my first year of business, like this was definitely the biggest investment I made probably in my first five years of business. Uh, because it's a lot of money for a balloon inflator, but having a sizer is really is really important if you're doing any classic decor. Even if you're not, I would say this is my favorite for like doing five inches. It like cranks them out. It's such a little workhorse machine. Um, I just love it. And those those two, that's all I need. I have no intention of getting another inflator unless somehow helium becomes more available. I would like to get the inflator that hooks up to the gas tank so that all of your helium balloons are exactly the same size. That was going to be my next big purchase and then I couldn't get helium anymore so forget it. Um, So those are my only machines and they never fail me. Actually, I lie. The Air Force 4 failed me once and someone told me that you just have to replace the fuse. So for like $6, I ordered these cute little fuses on Amazon and there's this little drawer in the Air Force 4 where you can replace the fuse and it's good to go. So I love that. Um, And someone in Balloon Boss Mastermind told me that at Summit and it made the entire... (laughs) It made the entire price of admission totally worth it with that one little tip that someone told me while waiting in line for food. So it's incredible the things you learn when you are around other balloon people. Um, All right, last question. Um, How do you do your balloon drops? Oh, okay, this wasn't planned, but um, I have an entire episode about balloon drops coming out next week. So we are going to, it's pre-recorded. I just recorded it, which is why it's fresh. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna not answer that question. And I have a full-length episode coming out next week about New Year's Eve balloon drops and pop drops because I know a lot of you have balloon drop questions. And I do a lot of balloon drops. So stay tuned for that one next week. And with that, let's wrap up this episode. And I will see some of you in the Patreon group for your bonus episodes. If you haven't joined yet, there are like 75 episodes in there waiting for you if you are looking for something to listen to. Um, And thank you to those who support me already in the Patreon group. I really appreciate it. Um, I will talk to you next week for our balloon drop episode. Thanks for listening. As usual, I try to keep it bright and light. If you're interested in bonus episodes, head over to our Patreon group where I release a brand new episode every week in our book club. Each month, I read through a brand new self-development book that helps us all grow and learn in our businesses. Or join the brand new Money Archetype tier and gain access to bonus episodes and resources all about your money archetype. For more information about any of the resources in this episode, check out the show notes or head to thebrightballoon.com.